where are the where are the points that the sacred account comes in? All right, so the first thing that most people need to do is they need to be on a forced savings plan. That's like point number one. They need to be on a forced savings plan. heard like uh, almost every guru will acknowledge some form of this this phrase of either live below your means or or earn more than you spend or expand your means it's all kind of the same thing the point of that is to save money right like when someone says you need to live below your means what are they really trying to say they're trying to say jerry you should be saving every month there should be money left over so reduce your expenses so you've got leftover income when, when, when Grant Cardone says expand your income, he's saying you need to be able to save. You need to have surplus. You need to have more money than you spend. He's just saying it the different way of earn more income rather than reduce the expenses, which I'm more of a fan of the second one, right? So we need to be on a forced automated savings plan. This is the first thing the sacred account does, right? The reason most people don't get on a forced automated savings plan, if you're watching this and you're not currently on a forced automated savings plan, there's a couple of reasons. The first one is you're afraid that you can't keep up with it, right? You're worried about it. You're like, well, then I don't have, the, if it's, let's say it's 250 bucks a month I've got to do, then I don't have the 250 bucks a month. You do. And the thing is, you're already going to spend it if you don't, right? Your car payment is more than 250 a month. Did you think about that before you signed up for the car payment? Now I'm not going to have the $400 a month. Your health insurance is the same thing. It's forced and automated. Oh, now I'm not going to have the 300 a month that's into them. Your rent or your mortgage. Oh, now I'm not going to have the two grand. You didn't think that. You thought, I want that, so I'm going to pay for it. I can't afford all of the house right now, so I'm going to get on a payment plan called a mortgage. Or I can't afford the 40 grand right now, so I'm going to get on a car payment. So I want you to think about your life being maxed out, 10 out of 10, abundance and prosperity and all dynamics. That is now an item you can purchase. I want you to think about it like this. And it's going to be a really big number. It's going to probably be, you know, between two and $5 million for you to get there in the next 10, 15 years. That's what you're going to need. If you wait longer, it's going to be a bigger number because inflation and taxes are going to go up. But let's just say for the sake of today's argument that the number is 2 million. You need $2 million in assets, in investments to have a life of abundance and prosperity in all areas of life so that you achieve passive income greater than savings, expenses, and taxes. And you no longer have the obligation of trading time for money. And you can do whatever you want to do with your energy, with your time, with your, with your creativity. Let's just say that number is 2 million. You can now finance that by being on a forced monthly payment plan to your future, into your sacred account, right? Now you could argue with me, oh, maybe it's not the sacred account. Good, let's take that off the table. Let's just say it's not the sacred account. Put it somewhere, right? Now, where is the question? We've been taught it's not just what you make, it's what you keep. It's not just what you keep I believe it's also where you keep it. That's very important. If I do this and I take what I keep and I put it in a 401k that I can't touch till I'm 60, I have now mortgaged away the very future I'm trying to put, put myself on a payment plan for. You see that? I can't have that future till I'm 60 now. I put it on hold. It's on layaway. I can't touch that. I can't have that. It's no longer a future I can have in the, in the near term. It's going to be far out, right? On the trade-off, I stick it in a bank. Right now, I'm not getting any growth. So I'm putting it in a position where it's going to slow me down again. Plus, it's being put at risk and there's a higher chance I'm going to spend it. Right. So the bank's not ideal. Okay. I don't want to give it to Wall Street. I don't want to give it to banks. I definitely don't want to give it to the IRS. Like for those of you that are getting tax refunds, we should correct your Form W 4 on your paycheck. So you get that money back every month and you can use it rather than having it taken away for the entire year. 0% interest paid and then you get you know, a refund at the end. You don't want that system. So if we're not going to give it to the banks, we're not going to give it to Wall Street, we're not going to give it to the IRS, what should we do with it? Do we bury it in the backyard? I don't think so. Cash went down. Currency paper dollars went down by, what, 8 9% in value last year? So saving in dollars was the equivalent of having, if you had 10 grand in savings, you might have as well have had 10 grand on a 9% interest rate credit card. You lost that money. Your 10 grand is not worth 10 grand anymore. It's worth 9,100. You paid interest via inflation. 
right? So we don't want to just leave it in cash. So what do we do then? We could do gold and silver, right? That's an option. Most of you are like, well, why would I do that? The bank that gives you your currency has 80% of the reserves in gold and silver. I would be asking, why am I not doing that? Why am I, why am I taking their paper? They produce paper and send it out to us to consume while they take in gold. You see the backwardsness in the system? I should just flip it to where I'm getting the gold instead, right? So that's an option I can do. The second one I can do is I can do the sacred account. Okay, the sacred account is high early cash value dividend paying whole life insurance. Okay, and I can put money away there and that's gonna put me on a forced automated savings plan. Okay, now in my opinion, I like the life insurance better as a starter. Number one, it's guaranteed against loss. Gold is not. It's guaranteed to grow. Gold is not. I can borrow against higher values, which I can't do with gold. Right, it's a more simple way to start. It's more proven. Like I said, over 3,000 banks have their money there right now. Right, like whatever bank you have, where your money is at right now, I can probably bet you that there's probably a, an amount of their reserve that's in a dividend paying whole life insurance policy. You're literally funding for them to do it. Just bypass the middleman and do it yourself. Okay, so being on a forced automated savings plan, this is like funding your financial future, putting yourself on a payment plan to get to that number so you can achieve passive income greater than savings, expenses, and taxes. If I would go on a payment plan for a car, why would I not go on a payment plan to buy my financial freedom? Why would I not go on a payment plan to buy my financial freedom when I would be on a payment plan to buy a house that's going to just wear out over time and cost me money? Right? If I would be on a payment plan for a college degree, why would I not be on a payment plan to finance my financial freedom? It makes zero sense. And I'm, I'm explaining it to you as if you're financing something. You're not actually financing something. You're saving money. You're just committing to a recurring monthly amount. People think in terms of payments today. They don't think about, you know, I need $2 million invested right now. That's too big of a thing to confront, but they can think about, okay, I've got a $400 car, car payment. Good. Why are you financing the bank's financial freedom with that car payment instead of your own? Doesn't make any sense. Why are you financing Wall Street's financial freedom by getting the free match that isn't really free in your 401k instead of your own? So that forced monthly savings plan is such a big deal. I want to show you the power of this. So I've got a couple of financial calculators up that I'm going to go over with you. Um, the first one is going to just be a, a savings calculator, right? So let's just say that for the next um, 30 years, you know, so that's going to be February 18th of 2053. February 18th. 2053. There we go. Let's just say that for the next 50 years, uh, I put away a monthly deposit of $500. And I put this away and I get a 4% return and I don't invest that in anything. I just let it sit there for the next 30 years, right? $500 a month is not that much money. Okay. So deposits at beginning, 30 years, one day, I do 361 deposits. Uh, that's going to turn into $344,000, right? That's at a 4% rate of return, right? Why did I use that figure? Because that's what the sacred account pays on average, 3 to 5% tax-free. That's if I just leave the money there, right? In 30 years, the average American will not have $344,000. It's not happening. Right, even with Wall Street, it's not happening. Right, I can count like when when you talk to your friends and relatives, and I go through a buy account. Which of those people has you know over over three quarter over two over twenty five percent of a million dollars there? There's three point four million or three hundred forty four thousand there. You can probably count on one hand the amount of people you know that actually have that money. Okay, it's not complicated. It's five hundred dollars a month at four percent for thirty years. Why do people not have it? Number one, they're not actually saving $500 a month. They're not on a forced monthly savings plan. It's not a contract. Even your 401k is not a contract. Your 401k is an opt-in, which means next month you can opt out. Is it automated? Sure, but it's not forced. Your car payment, on the other hand, that's forced. Your mortgage, on the other hand, that's forced. You don't have a choice to opt out of that contract unless you get rid of it. If you want to keep the car or keep the house, you need to keep making that payment. Right. So I'm saying this is similar. If you were on a contract where you were forced contractually to save $500 a month, guess what would happen? You would definitely save $500 a month. 
right? The other thing is most people aren't making 4%. They're saving in a bank where they're making 0 0.01 or they're saving with Wall Street where they think they're making 4%, but Dalbar, a mutual fund rating agency, they did a third party study showing investors over the last 20 years, their average return uh, after fees and losses, but before inflation and taxes was only 3.88%. You factor in inflation and taxes, and they're actually not making even that, right? Not only that, but when you pull this money out of the 401k, if you do accumulate 344 grand, you're going to pay taxes on it. So there's there's probably 30% of that that's going to leave. You'll be left with 200 something thousand dollars, right? So being on a forced savings plan means that it's automated and it's forced. It's contractual. You have to do it. Hey, thanks so much for watching my channel. My name is Jerry Feta. I'm the owner, founder, and CEO of Wealth Dynamics. So if this channel helped you, if the content helped you, I would like to ask you to help me back by clicking the subscribe button, You know, comment, like the video, share it with someone that could benefit from the information. I also wanna invite you to get a free copy of my book, Blueprint to Financial Freedom. If you go to jerryfeta.com forward slash B2F promo, you can grab a free copy there. You can also just click the link down in the description. And I hope to see you back on the channel again soon.